So today we have this Kawasaki STX-15F multifunction display to look at. This display belongs to a friend of mine at work and this display is not powering on. We'll look at this in just a minute. We're looking at the power and test it out. I have already gone around with my spudger tool here and released this rubber gasket. We'll get it out of the way and I have my hot air set for about 175C here at about 3 on airspeed. Just want to be very patient here and I don't want it to be melting. I just want it to be very pliable. I've already done the top as you can see here as a trial, but on video I want to show you hopefully a little bit better control here. This is my first attempt at this, so it's all trial and error. But here I'm just trying to get it pliable enough to be able to quickly turn this lip down. And I'm hoping we can separate the face because it's probably glued together. So now I have the top and the bottom where I can see if we can split it here. Just a little bit more heat. If you can see this, I'm actually getting my screwdriver in here. So I believe we might be able to split this face off. This takes a little bit of time on camera, so I'll fast forward through some of this. But the main thing I want to show you here is I'm, I'm being very patient with this. I don't want to tear it up. I don't want to get my, my workbench too hot either as I was showing there. I just I have a clear coating over my wood bench anyway. Just so you know one thing i want to mention after the fact here is i should have put a napkin or a paper towel down to keep from scratching the face of this you'll see later in the video that i do start putting the tissue down to just to protect the lens of this display so it don't get scratched up so one of the reasons why i'm using hot air and trying to break the glue loose to separate this housing is the only other alternative may be taking a dremel tool and cutting around the housing but if you look how this is designed the bracket that holds its own pushes against this face and this lip. So if I can separate it here, I would heat rather do so. And wow, we do have a lot of corrosion inside of here. I hope we can fix this thing. Definitely some water damage. But very surprisingly, it's not nearly as bad as the rust on the steel parts. When I first saw that little support bracket and how rusty it is, I didn't have much hope for the board, but actually the board is surprisingly well. Almost like the steel was uh, like an anode for the corrosion, but whether that's the case or not, I'm not sure. But as we hook the power up here, I'll show you up close, but I just took this diagram off the internet. And it does show here that you got your red for battery, your red and white for ignition, and of course our black for ground. So I got it, all three of those hooked up to about a 14 volt supply. We see our warning light, but we don't see any display at all. I'm very confused about how dark this display is. I don't know if that's some kind of sunburn on the film layer or if the LCD itself is, is really shot here. I'll give you a little bit of a up-close snapshot of the board. And let's also go into the microscope and give you a real up-close look at some of the corrosion here we find on the pins. Which, whether this is causing an issue or not yet, I don't know, but... That corrosion on the microcontroller is not a good thing. As you see here, we got several pins with corrosion build up. The rest of the chips are not really that bad. Again, look at the steel fasteners and the support bracket. It's a lot of oxidation. This chip here could use a little cleaning as well. And the only other bad spot is on this. Uh, this is a 5 volt regulator. And this chip here needs some cleaning up. But again, look how bad the support bracket is. I'll pause it here for just a second. You might want to see that pin out for your wiring. I'll try to include that in a video in another location as well. So here I'm just going to use some plastic safe. WD-40 uh, contact cleaner. Anything that's plastic safe should, should be okay to use here. I'm just going to clean up all the corrosion here. Of course, we're going to take that rusty bracket and screws out later as well. I'm just going to show it here. And I'll probably speed through some of this. I'm going to spray it really well. I'm going to scrub it with a brush. Any fine brush will be helpful here to get in on the microcontroller. I'm going to clean it up with alcohol and a Q-tip as well later, but 
I'm also going to give you a shot under the microscope of what it looks like after cleaning. So this board actually cleaned up surprisingly well. I'm very happy at how it turned out here. I mean, none of the pins look bad where the wiring connector is. Well, where the wires connect here. There's our pin out again if you're interested. Our voltage regulator cleaned up pretty well. So as we power this back on, you know, it's very possible it was like this before, but we see our warning light. I want to show you here that on the left bottom, if you look, you can see the E for the fuel gauge in a bottom bar graph here. And I'll give you a still shot here. You can see it better. The LCD actually is working. So we got to take it apart and see if it's something we can work on here with a cover and over something internal to the LCD. I hope it's just something on the over lens of the LCD, but we'll get into it and we'll find out. Just taking the screws off here. And of course we got a lot of corrosion there. Trying to be very careful with the elastomeric strip or the zebra strip there and also had some little line up pins at the bottom actually it's pretty clean here where our zebra strip goes surprisingly clean let's take this little separation plate out support plate and we'll get out our display and our zebra strip of course the, the display I don't think it's glued in, but it's, it's probably a rubber seal on the front or something. It's, it's definitely keeping us from coming out. But we do not want to force this out and crack the LCD screen. It'll be game over. Yeah, it's definitely rubber. Yeah. The rubber's gotten hard and stuck. And it does have a clear lens. I hope that polarizing cover or whatever that is that sheet I hope it's on the actual clear lens on the front but it doesn't look like it it looks like it's built into the LCD let's go a little further here so this rubber has gotten old and it's sticky and it may have been glued on for all I can tell but we're definitely going to have to do something different if we go back with this if it's repairable because it's ripping on me and it's it's stretching. If you can see this as I'm pulling on it, it's stretching this rubber. So that's going to be a problem we'll look at later. The front lens is just a clear lens, so we got some kind of polarizing layer on the LCD itself here. So let's see if we can clean it up. That's a little bit of 91% alcohol and uh, this is this is an afterthought, but I probably should have wore gloves here. Just letting you know, just because I'm doing it here, don't mean it's right. I probably should have had latex gloves on, because I don't know exactly what all is in this uh, film layer here. But I am very excited here that this is actually coming off very well. I still, at this point, don't know if I'll be able to fix it or not, but. Look how well this is coming off. We definitely do not want to crack the display. I'm trying to be very careful here. I'm going to try to speed up the video so it don't take forever to show it. But as you can see here, I'm, I'm having to go very slow and pull pretty hard to get this to turn loose. But maybe we have some hope of saving this display. Just as a small disclaimer here, I know nothing about LCD displays. I'm trying to figure this out as we go here. So some things here may not be the exact method to use. This is all learning as we go. Just going to clean this up good with some alcohol. So 
So as we look here, we're definitely going to lose that little graphic diffuser on the front. There's no way to really save this because the diffusing layer here is, I'm going to call it sunburn. I don't really know if it was sun or just age that got it, but something's wrong with the diffuser layer. But I'm going to, I'm going to stick this back together with the rubber now just for the correct spacing at this time. It's not really going to be put together right as you can see. I just want to see with the strip making contact here and powered up, do we get a display? And it doesn't look like it, but then as we get the angle just right, we can barely see a faint image like the LCD is working. If we use the very corner of this polarized film that isn't burned too bad, we can actually see the letters show up. As we turn it 90 degrees, we can see an inverse image where it's a dark background and like white outline and like white uh, letters and numbers on the LCD display. So I'm really excited about that, but I do have to figure out what to order. I've never replaced polarized film on an LCD before, so I hope getting the right sticky back stuff won't be an issue. So when it comes in, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so now I do have a sheet that's come in. And another disclaimer here, this is what I ordered. It might be something better or worse, I don't know. But here you go, this is what I ordered. I also have a link in the description of the exact one I ordered if it's still available. And I got a big enough sheet here to turn either way because as you would know it long ways <laughs> it's inverse that's pretty cool but that's not what we want so I made sure I ordered a big enough sheet that I could have turned this either way and there we go we see that it did not work in like the landscape mode you got to turn it up more like the portrait mode or the portrait orientation for this polarized film to work so I'm glad we ordered one big enough to have a plan B here all right, this is our protective film here, as you can see. That's just our protective film. We'll lay it back gently on there. So the other side is supposed to be our sticky back. Yep, that's sticky. All right, so we know how to cut it. And we know how we need to lay it. Just going to mark it really quick. I'm going to try to use a cheap paper cutter to cut this, and we'll see... If it works out well it does cut it but just barely but for the thickness of this it actually did work okay show us a lot straighter than i can cut with scissors so all right so this is our sticky back i have already cleaned my lcd i'm going to get the corner started and uh, once we get the middle started there's no turning back on this You'd have to peel it all off and just restart, you know, with another piece. This actually went pretty good to be my first time. It's kind of, you know, it's very similar to a smartphone uh, screen protected cover. You just got to work the bubbles out. I did have one bubble I couldn't get out on this, but it was minor. You, you can barely see it. Just pull our protective screen off, and sure enough, our graphics light up on the display there when we peel it across. Let's power it up and see. All right. Fantastic. Some of the letters are missing a few sections, but I don't have my hand pressing with good even pressure across the back strip for the LCD so there we go so one thing I got to include in this video is my tactile push buttons were not working so I did have to order some 13 millimeter length tactile buttons before I could give this back to my buddy at work so I will have a link in the description for these because the 13 millimeters did work out I'm gonna start off with some low melt solder 
I've showed this on my channel a good bit, but I'm going to put some Amtec flux on here and then just work some of the low temp solder in to lower the melting temperature just to make sure we don't hurt the pads as we pull these off. Especially with a board with some age on it. I just like to try to mix in as much of the low temp solder as possible and just helps the removal process be so much easier and a lot less harsh on the pads when you pull them off. Sometimes you get lucky and you can just heat it up and, and pull them right out, but I'm going to go ahead and use my desoldering gun here. And then with just a touch of the soldering iron on some of the pads, it should ease right out because that low temp solder, it stays liquid for quite a few seconds. Just going to clean it up here with some solder wick braid. Clean it up with some alcohol. As we see here, it is a direct replacement. Got lucky on that the first time. 13 millimeter is from the base, like from the board up to the tip. And that ended up being correct. Some more Amtec 559 flux. I usually get this from Northridge Fix. Now I'm just going to use some regular leaded solder to solder this back on. Clean it up with some alcohol. After the same thing to the other side now, so we'll we'll speed up the video a lot through this one, just so you see that we had to do it, but you don't have to watch every single step of it. This ended up being a pretty important part of the process, as we'll see later, because these buttons do matter. Here we're just testing the buttons in continuity mode. Yep, all right. So that's got everything done. I also had to hit the solder joints a little bit on this LED because of corrosion. A little bit weak there. But you see I got the board cleaned up well, front and back. Cleaned up that support area as much as I can. And I, I actually cleaned up and spray painted the support bar so the rust wouldn't be so bad on it. When it comes to this front clear cover, I had to cut some of the length out of the, the rubber gasket because I couldn't find any of this side anywhere on the internet that I searched. And I just simply took super glue and hit the corners and where the edges connected and just got it back on there as tight as I could so it fit back in position. We're going to keep the spacing exactly the same as the factory intended here as we put our LCD back. spacer and holder back a little zebra strip which I just touch with my fingers after cleaning it so let's clean that edge up one more time and that's where our elastomeric strip goes on the pads on the board line them up line the pin up I also clean the heads of these screws up a little bit of emery cloth and a little bit of scotch bright pad clean up the screws. Put our support brace back across our connection, which I think is very important to keep our LCD elastomeric strip in good constant tension and pressure against the plates. You see here, I'm going to finish tightening by hand. I did use my power screwdriver to start them and run them in, but not all the way. I 
want to be very careful with the display. It's already got a, a small crack in the bottom of it right here anyway. So just want to tighten it up as easy as we can. Let's give it a quick power on test here. Connect it the same way here with our black to ground and our two reds with power. The red and the red and the white. I like it. I think we're really ready to go ahead and assemble. One thing I want to look at here before we seal it all back up is making sure the mode and set buttons do work because I, did, I didn't check that earlier. But if you notice here we hit mode, it shows like it's in slow mode here. I'm not familiar with the jet ski at all, but it looks like if we hold the button down, maybe it'll change. Well, maybe not. Well, let me hold it a little bit longer. Well, there we go. It cycled. It takes about seven or eight seconds and it cycled back up. It comes up in full power output. That's awesome. That could have been part of our problem is either the buttons with corrosion was triggering that theirself or just allowing you not to come out of it. One of the two. We'll find out. So now I'm just going to seal this back up with some clear silicone I have. We'll get through running a thin bead around here. It's not going to take a whole lot. We actually go, we cleaned up the surface pretty well. It's going to fit pretty flat together. So we'll just make sure this fits well and we'll clamp it. Get a rubber boot through there and We want to put uh, we'll, at least two, maybe, maybe we'll go ahead and do a third clamp. We'll leave this for four or five hours before we even take it off and back now. One thing to note, I, I did take a Q-tip and I cleaned out this that gap right there where the we do have to fold that edge back down on the lip. I did clean the silicone out of that spot before it dried. That way we don't have to worry about um, having to deal with it as we try to push the edge back down again i got my hot air at 175 c at about three on the speed just going to be very patient here and work this gently just want to be good and pliable use a good flat surface like the bench and rock it back and forth and I'm liking that pretty good. I mean, no idea what I'm doing here. Just trying to learn as we go and using the tools that we have. And if there's a better way out there, hey, put it in the description. I'll appreciate it. And everybody viewing, I'll appreciate it as well. This is the way we chose to do it here. And the first one we worked on so is there some mistakes absolutely do we know what we're doing not really did we get it working so far i'll put the rubber grommet back in here Put our gasket back on. A little compression ring, retaining ring. Let's hook it back up again. Again, my white is attached to my ground. The yellow attached to my 14 volts positive, and I'm going to go across the red and the red and white here the power up the battery and the ignition there we go FPO and screens working very well I can't wait to give it to my buddy and see how it works 
he did send me a short video of it working, so here we go. Now I'm going to get I hope you found this video helpful today. Hopefully it helps somebody else out there with the same type of display with the same issue. Again, the first for us, so we we're learning as we go here, but in the end it worked out very well. I'm very happy that this repair saved my buddy about a thousand dollars. These displays are not cheap. So if you did like this video and it helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. I'm going to have some links down in the video description of some of the things we used here as well as some of my other tools and items I like to use on my workbench that I found helpful. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.